first of the year. Starting off in fine style with Nonsuch Brewing's Baltic Porter. They simply describe it as having smooth coffee and chocolate notes. Well, I guess we should just start opening mail. That's why we're here, isn't it? This first one says Flux. Okay. I think I did order a bit of Flux after doing those kit builds and having a little bit of trouble soldering one of them. I decided I needed some additional Flux in my world. Now, I do have some cheap uh, liquid Flux but I see the fancy kids using paste flux, so I figured I'd buy, you know, the cheapest possible paste flux I could find. Oh, hey, that means it must be good stuff. I mean, the, the leaded solder is good. I suppose the leaded uh, flux is also good. Do you really think it was made in the USA, though? I mean, it says it was. I bought it from a seller in China. I don't think it showed the uh, the label, or at least not the Made in USA anyway. I'm not sure. Maybe it did. Or maybe this is stuff that was sold to a factory in China and diverted towards the aftermarket. That's also a possibility. Oh, I didn't even notice in the package. There's a couple of dispenser needles to go on the front of this as well. Okay. Two pieces of what? Made in the USA. Okay, so it does say that. 10 cc's of NC559 ASM flux paste, lead free solder paste. Um, but it says on the package it may contain lead. Okay, uh, plus needles, right. Now, I didn't get that one that's shown there. I got this one, $4.28 plus free shipping. Woohoo! Does it say on there? Yeah, that is the exact thing that I got pictured. And it does say made in the USA. Okay. So maybe this is some that they sourced as overstock or, you know, backdoor stock from factory. I don't know. Right. The next thing in says POE injector. Got one of those last week or last mailbag, didn't I? Oh, this is different though. Okay. So these are, yeah, they're exactly the same. Okay. So we have a LAN port and a PoE port and DC input. Oh, okay. So these are actually probably the same. It shows that the DC positive goes on pins four and five and the negative goes on seven and eight, which means, yeah, these are the same passive type as those cables last week or last mailbag. So, huh, nothing. I was hoping that they were the more advanced type, but these ones are still only good for 100 base T, not for gigabit. Even though they clearly say that they are for gigabit. Gigabit power over ethernet, passive PoE, injector splitter for CCTV IP camera. Uh, yeah, $2.20 each. I bought two of them. And if they are, I suppose I could have looked there, couldn't I? Yeah. Anyway, they describe them as supporting between 12 and 52 volts. Wow. Uh, gigabit PoE injector, maximum 2 amps with a current LED current indication, probably voltage. Non 802.3 compliant. Hmm. And then they talk about the DC voltage again. Yeah. But you ain't carrying gigabit across two pairs. You're going to need all four pairs. I'm pretty confident. Somebody's going to correct me, I'm sure, but I'm pretty confident that's the way it works. Right. So far, one useful thing and one thing that lied to me. What do we got this time? Two pin screw blue PCB. Wow. Ouch. I'm getting ahead of myself not watching what I'm doing. At least I didn't draw any blood. Uh, these are, yeah, these are just your typical little circuit board uh, screw terminals. Perfect. I was running out of these. I had an idea for a project that needed more than I have in stock. So I got a bunch. These are supposed to clip together or something. See a little cutout there, and there's a mating mail piece on that side. They should just keyhole together like that, 
or snap together or something. I'm going to have to play with these ones a little bit. Other ones that I've had in the past lock together like that. So, hmm. Maybe you just have to get the alignment absolutely perfect. There we go. There. That's how they're supposed to work. Then you can put as many as you want on the side of your circuit board and solder them down. Now I just have to remember what that project was that I was planning a couple of months ago when I ordered these. Pin and pieces, blue two pin pitch screw terminal block connector, 5.8 millimeter panel PCB, etc. etc. Uh, I ordered the 40 pack for $5.31 with free shipping. Phosphor bronze nickel plated or stainless steel, so basically they don't know. Um, brass tin plated. The screw is an M2.5 steel zinc plated, color blue, sure. Yeah, so. I don't know what more is there to say about them. They have some sort of metal contacts. They have a screw and they fit on a circuit board. Okay, I'll try and be a bit more careful with this one. It says sensor module. Okay. And well clear of the knife. So this is two circuit boards with some header pins and screw terminals. It says screw expansion board for Pi Pico GPIO. So I've got a bunch of screw terminal boards for various different Arduino modules. And since I've started acquiring these Pi Picos, I decided that I probably should get a screw terminal board for it so that I can experiment with them without having to leave it on a breadboard. So this is interesting that it comes with yellow female headers. I don't know if I've had any of those before. That's kind of cool. And then four strips of screw terminals. Those are a little bit smaller than those blue ones that I just got too. Hmm, more compact, I guess. And yeah, they lock together at the ends just like the other ones do. Hopefully even a little bit better. Yeah, that's much smoother. Okay. And then there's two sets of female headers. So one set for the Pico. I guess one set just for plugging DuPont wires into to go off to wherever. Well, that's kind of cool. So yeah, that just plops on there. And then, yeah, you can get access to everything quite easily. And they're labeled. That's the only complaint I have with Pi Picos. The pins are labeled, but they're labeled on the bottom. So when it's plugged into something, you can't see them. So this gives me nice visuals, gives me a couple of different ways to plug into them, either with DuPont pins or with wires that go off in all directions. Raspberry Pi Pico Expansion Board GPIO Breakout Extender Adapter Onboard Male and Female Pins for Pi Pico. Wait, that's not the one that I got. That's the one that I got. So this one cost me $3.03. I bought two of them, uh, $1.59 shipping, and of course the shipping combined, as all good sellers do. Again, what do you want to say about it? The uh, voltage just matches the Pi Pico. It is just a breakout board, but they're a very handy thing to have. Although that one with the regulator and the additional mail pins might also be interesting to have. And the last thing in, it says gas soldering iron. Okay. Well packed in foam. That's nice. Oh, hey, it is exactly that. It is a butane, I'm hoping, powered soldering iron. But it also can be just a little torch. Let's yoink it out of here. So many years ago, I had a butane powered soldering iron that I used for a lot of uh, a lot of just handy little portable uses backstage. Um, if I needed to remake a microphone connector or fix a cable or something like that, uh, sit in the, in the dark backstage, I'd just whip that out wherever I was. I wouldn't need to worry about plugging it in. And it did exactly what I needed it to do. So I think this one also claims to be able to be a... Okay, yeah, there it is. So, with that piece, um, instead of having the soldering iron tip on there, 
Just put that on. And it can be a torch for all your heat shrinking needs. So there's how you turn it on and off. It just sort of turns a gas valve. There is the fill valve on the bottom, which you fill from a standard butane canister, like you'd get at uh, your local tobacconist, I suppose. I'm not going to fill this guy all the way up, just enough to get it to do its job. And hopefully that'll work. One thing about the old butane soldering iron that I used to have, it had a little sparker on the top of it, on its cap. That was really handy. I'm just looking around for something around here to generate fire. There we go. That ought to do it. So, let's see what happens. Okay. I can hear it. Can you hear it? I'm not sure. Can you see it? Maybe if we give it something to burn. There we go. Well, that's doing the job. <laughs> Mini gas blowtorch soldering butane cordless welding pin burner gas solder iron. They have a few different variants. I got the cheapest one, which is the three in one soldering iron, which cost me $11.75 Canadian and free shipping. The fanciest one with all these tweezers and other tools and extra tips and things. All oh, those extra tips would be cool. Uh, that would have cost 32 bucks, no, 31 75 Canadian or 23 32 American. What's the mid range one? Okay, it just comes with the extra tips and stuff, not the solder sucker in the case and solder and stuff like that. Okay, regardless, I got the cheap one because I've got all that other stuff. Unbranded cordless green plastic soldering iron can hold eight milliliters of butane flames up to 1300 degrees soldering iron about 450 working time 40 to 60 minutes. Hmm. I don't know that I would be soldering for that duration, but that could be useful. I suppose well, I'm hoping that that does do as it promised and come in really handy. Now what is this thing in here? This old tube. It says it is a replacement part. Okay. Anyway, there's some basic instructions on it. That's pretty cool. The temperature is up to 1300 degrees. No indication of Celsius or Fahrenheit. Don't touch the working soldering iron head by band. Okay. Keep children away from it. Use high quality gas. Don't fill the gas too full to filming. Don't try and repair the heated gasoline tanks or burning fog tank. Avoid heavy fall. Right. I will avoid all heavy falls. Is that cooled off? Yeah, I can touch that. Okay. So, let's just see how quickly it will heat up to solder melting temperature, because that's a good test to do. Okay, I can hear it roaring. Right there we go. We can start to see the little element burning or heating up in there a little bit. I'm just going to do this until the solder starts melting. See how quickly that heats up. If you remember the other one that I used to have, it took about 30 seconds before you could get solder melting. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. That was fairly quick. Okay. Give that a quick clean over there and shut them off. I think that could come in handy. Um, the most recent time that that would have come in handy is when I was working on the Christmas lights, on the uh, just adding a set of uh, an extra string of lights to the Christmas tree system outside. I was using my cheap USB powered iron, which is really cheap iron, and it just barely was holding its own outdoors in the winter weather. So. I think that's what triggered me to buy this because, like I said, I don't have that butane one and it was really handy for doing soldering jobs in odd locations. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. Interesting, different, as always, some things that I'd forgotten about. Generally fun. A little disappointing in these guys, though. As I said, they claim to be gigabit, but I don't think they can do gigabit with only two pairs of wires. Anyway, that'll be something to tinker with. Uh, some flux, because everybody keeps telling me that I need to use more flux. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to turn into Lewis Ross, but I'm never going to use that much flux, but, you know. Um, these Pipeco breakout boards, I think those are going to be really handy for tinkering at some point in the future. I'm wondering if the reason that I bought these was that I was planning on just simply making my own until I found those that I could order. I don't remember what the project was. I'll just add them to my stock, and when I come up with a project that needs them, I will help them. And then there's this guy. I think it's going to be a good thing. It's still warm. Hmm. Um, as I said, I really liked having that old butane iron that I used to have decades ago, and I wish I could still find it, but there we go. This one was cheap enough, and I hope it will serve the purpose. Is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, welcome back to another year of silliness and whatever I happen to do around my shop here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, found it interesting. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, you can put them down below. And as always, thanks to my YouTube channel members and my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep the mailbags rolling in and keeping my beer fridge full. I do appreciate it. You guys keep me, uh, keep me from going broke doing this. And yeah, I appreciate it. Just like I appreciate everybody that watches every week. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later.